Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Echo Jenna's Path. So, the last place we left off, we were, well, you know, we were all in Brian's clutches, and the situation is a bit different this time because we're pretty much all here except for TJ and, you know, Flynn, but still, most of the gang is here, and yeah, not a good situation. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back in and just, well, let's see how messed up this can get, all right? All right, let's get back into it. All right, alarm chain, you're up. Don't forget to save us from this horror when you when you when it's your time, girl. All right, let's do it. Brian gets to work tying it up to a conspicuous hook on the kitchen ceiling. He's incredibly quick with tying the knot, like he's done this a thousand times before. I can feel my heart pounding in my ears, each blade on the noose glinting with what little light there is in the trailer. I try to crane my neck to look at Jenna, but I'm still having trouble seeing her. Brian smiles down at Misha, bending down and taking the bat's cuffs off just as quickly. What the fuck are you doing? Shut up! It'll be okay. Be calm. Don't struggle. Brian's voice reminds me of children's show presenters with his squeaky, reassuring cadence. But the context of his words makes it deeply unsettling, and, I, and, I'm struggling against my collar, and I'm struggling against my collar restraint whenever he's turned away. I have to get out of here. Brian sets down the stool squarely beneath where the noose is hanging. Step up onto the stool. You're short enough so this will actually work. You're fucking crazy! Misha reels back away from him, but Brian grabs him by the hand. He starts bending it inward, and the bat squeals in pain. Okay, you either do what I say, or I'm gonna start breaking every joint in your body, alright? Misha continues to shriek, finally wrenching free after nodding. Okay, okay! Put your head through the noose. I can see the turmoil in Misha's face. A thousand fight-or-flight responses running through his head. The inside of the noose itself don't got any blades, just the outside, so you can't be grabbing it. Misha stares through the hole in front of him. Do it! He's about to grab for the bat's hand again, but Misha shoves his head through just in time after stepping up on the stool. I'm in! Good! The bear reaches up and tightens the noose more firmly around the bat's neck, looking proud of himself as he does so. He's cinching it hard until it's clear the bat is struggling to breathe. With a smile, he reaches down and tugs off one of the legs of the... One of the legs off the little step stool. Brian chuckles to himself as the bat teeters, Misha nearly kicking the stool away. He just barely manages to keep himself upright, with the tip of his toes catching the edge. His cheeks flare as more of his weight is having to be held aloft by his neck, the strain causing his neck veins to bulge. He gasps like a fish for breath, swaying his hips from side to side, from, from one side to the other to get a more solid standing position. I can see him resisting the urge to grab the noose, an act that would surely strip his fingers to the bone. Brian, meanwhile, chuckles to himself, Tickled deeply by the display. There you go. Brian has turned away from me now, but even though, but even from this angle, it's clear he's rubbing himself through his sweatpants. I petrified, wanting to scream out to make him stop, but not daring to make a sound. This is what Duke was warning Brian not to do, and he did it anyway. I close my eyes, praying to see what that, praying to see that weasel again, to put a stop to all this. Hey, don't think I forgot about you all. When I open my eyes again, he's looking directly at me. Well, you two, at least. I mean, given the choice of a bunch of guys and one girl, what kind of queer would pick the girly? He says the word queer with distaste. They're barely beginning to reach into his little satchel. He looks to Jen as he pulls out what looks like a long spool of string. The others tell me you're a bit of a bitch anyway. At least that's what your brother said. I keep expecting Jenna to start speaking, talking him down. Full psychoanalysis mode like all those thriller movies. But right now, she is completely silent. Leo stirs slightly beside me, mumbling something incoherent. Brian has scissors now, and he kneels in front of us. I begin to feel faint as he points the edge of them toward me with a smile. Instead of cutting me, he begins snipping along the side of my shorts and underwear, cutting up to the waistband. What are you doing? Misha teeters in the kitchen, letting out a blubbering, choking sound as he struggles for breath. Saw you a few weeks ago. You had no eyes. Heard you talking to the empty rail yard, saying that you two need to stay close. Thinking I should oblige that request. What? The eyeless chase, the thing we saw earlier. Leo stirs some as I shout, shifting slightly as Brian does the same to his pant leg. Don't worry, I won't get your bits out. He reaches into his little medical bag and pulls out a suturing needle. But I think you're supposed to shave the fur before you start doing this, but ah well. Man, Brian is a fucked up piece of shit. No, please, you don't need to do this. That thing you saw, it wasn't me. I've seen it too! Brian blinks, canting his head slightly. Well, I figured that much. That he wasn't real. 
You still have your eyes for now, and that goatee. He's pushing our legs together now, and my heart feels like it's in my throat. My vision's starting to blur. That'll square him now. We're returning to joint breaking time. And I can always stitch other things together. Oh, God, no. The needle hits me first, in my mid-thigh. I cry out, squeezing my fists together, squeezing my fists against my chest. I want to deck him, punch him, do anything to make him stop. I yell so loud I slobber onto the front of my shirt, tears once again welling in my eyes. I can feel the metal pierce through my skin, far too deep as it tears through muscle and tugs it back out again. Leo begins to writhe slightly as it goes through his leg, though he doesn't wake. That's one. Stop! I start to feel faint as blood pulls from a new holes in my thigh, though the needle re-entering promptly wakes me back up. Fuck! Two! Stop! Jenna speaks from the corner of the room, her voice unlike I've ever heard her before. Quiet, so much so that I don't know if Brian even heard her. Three! Misha gasps, wobbling erratically as blood drips from his left hand. He must have gripped the rope for a second and cut himself. Don't fall, kid! Brian calls to Misha before looking back. He has a lurid gaze as he stares directly into my eyes, pushing the needle in again. So deep I'm sure it scrapes the bone, and it's like my whole body's been lit on fire. Snot dribbles down my nose. I can't fucking take it anymore. Brian keeps counting. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Leo's writhing has gotten more intense, and each turn tug of his leg spreads the puncture wounds more. I can't take it. Something begins to move in the corner of the room, in the closet beside the bedroom. I can't tell if it's just my blurred vision or whether the door is actually opening. In the kitchen, the school stool tips over, and Misha is suddenly dangling, dangling freely. Oh, God! More choke gurgles escape the increasingly red-faced bat. His arms begin to flail wildly at first, and in a more coordinated rhythm. It takes me a moment to realize he's batting his wings. He flaps as hard as he can, and finally it looks like he manages to get a gulp of air. His hovering is erratic, never enough to keep him completely suspended. Brian peers over his shoulder, eyebrows raised slightly. Help him! Brian ignores her. Would you look at that? He can fly. The exertion is clearly ta taxing Misha, and he's still ha ta and he's still having trouble breathing. His face continues to turn an unnatural hue. He can't keep this up. Help him! Out of the corner of my eye, the closet door shifts open further. There's something inside. Someone. They're reddish white color, half cloaked in shadow, eyes wide, mouth open. It moves like there's a strobe light behind it. Its motion is choppy and unnatural. It's like it's not moving at all, but rather a series of images projected in front of my eyes. Changes every second, changing every second. And each second it gets closer. It looks to be as tall as Brian. Impossibly slender, with arms and legs that look warped and burnt. It has no eyes, no mouth, just holes. Next thing I know, it's in the kitchen. And Misha just drops. The bat hits the floor with a heavy thud. The cut noose still around his neck. Brian sees it now, too. He reels back just as it begins to approach him. They're real! Is all he can say before the bear is yanked about with immense, violent force, his body bending like a flicked rubber band. The contents of his pockets, one of his pants leg, and a small chunk of flesh smack against the kitchen wall. The rest of him goes flying out the window along with the figure. My mind immediately thinks back to when I was a kid. I'd seen plenty of stuff, lots of horrible things. But the psychiatrist had said that that was normal, and sometimes kids hallucinate. Not like that's not like this though. There's glass scattered right across the stained carpet. Blood stains dapple the turquoise polka dot drapes, swaying slightly in the new breeze that comes through the broken window. This is real, right? Past all reasonable doubt, it has to be. The shock of the situation has eclipsed the pain in my leg, though that brief respite fades quickly. It's wretched and niggling, like being stung by twenty little bees every couple seconds. Rivulets of Leo and I's blood pulls together and runs between our connected thighs. I writhe against my restraints, my head spinning and heart pounding. Every brace, every base animalistic neuron in my brain is firing to flee the situation, to make the throbbing stop, and just to find safety. But there's nothing I can do but gasp for breath, one eye on the window and the other on the struggling, bleeding silhouette of Misha. My vision blurs, and when I, re when I refocus, the bat is up on his knees, yellow eyes wide and bloodshot. He says something. His voice is high-pitched and quaking, utterly indiscernible, at least to me right now. He scrambles on his hands and knees, coughing and wheezing while yanking open several of Brian's open drawers. Dirty silverware, cooking utensils, and faded yellow receipt receipts shower the floor. The ruckus is immense, and I'm sure the thing outside hears it. That is, if it's even capable of hearing. He pulls another drawer completely out of its socket, 
an assortment of bottle openers, chip, twi chip clips, and twist ties clatters forth. Panting out ragged breaths, his fingers grab something glinting in silver from the new pile. His eyes widen. Keys! For a moment, his, tra his, ga his gaze is trails to the front door, then back to us. He coughs again, swearing some obscenity that I can't fully make out. Scampering along from the kitchen to the other side of the room, he begins using the key on Jenna's restraints. There's a satisfying click, and I can hear Jenna gasp. Thank you! She whispers. Misha wastes no time, moving back into my sightline for a moment to reach Leo beside me. You! Leo moans, seemingly unaware of the bat's presence, as his large paw reaches out to touch the bat's soft mane of white fur. Misha stops for a moment, blinking some of the still div definitely out of it wolf. Leo's arm goes limp again, the bat exhaling a coarse breath, trying to steady his own shaking hand so that he can unlock the wolf's restraints. Jenna quickly heads to the kitchen, grabbing a knife from the torn-out cutlery drawer. I'll get you out of this in a second. Just don't squirm, okay? She looks at me, her turquoise eyes wide and glistening. I'll be fine, Leo murmurs. Jenna doesn't even look at him as she brings the blade between her thighs. With a little slice, she manages to cut through this first stitch, and a fresh runnel of blood leaks from the puncture wounds. It's as if the wound is, is hissing at me, my ears ringing as I clutch my fists against my chest. I don't scream, don't scream. Ah! I whimper as the knife nicks the second, but doesn't quite break the string. Instead, it tugs up, widening the piercing and tearing at the skin. Leo stirs, his fists clenching as his half-witted eyes try to focus on Jenna. Mm -hmm. He bares his fangs briefly, trying to stand up. This pulls harder at the stitching, and I can't tell what will give first. The stitches are the, f are the flesh on my leg. I cry out between grit teeth, Jenna trying to pin the wolf back down. Stop moving, you're only making it worse! Jenna tries to cut the stitching faster now. She gets one rung. Two. Three. Fuck off of me! I look down and see that Jenna's blade has, blade tip has stuck into the wolf's thigh, even more blood trickling from the fresh wound. Just be still! I've never heard Jenna so tense. We only rise more, reeling against his restraints, with such ferocity that Misha can't undo the lock. God, just fucking give it time! Give it to me! The bat stops fiddling with the lock and extends a hand out to Jenna, the fennec turning to look at him. She doesn't move. She doesn't move to give him the knife, but she does loosen her grip. Misha doesn't hesitate and plucks it from her with the, the deftness of a pickpocket. Gingerly, he places the flat of his free hand against Leo's chest and with the other makes a quick slice between our legs in one motion. The pressure keeping us together is suddenly gone, and I feel I could freely pull my leg away from his. The pain is still immense, but nowhere near as bad. <laughs> You are so fucking lucky! I look up at the small bat as he moves to unlock Leo's restraint. If I'm lucky, I certainly don't feel it. Yeah, so are you! The bat lets out a sharp exhale as Leo is freed. Surprisingly, he stands right up, a bit less than steadily. It's still not entirely clear that he knows where he is, blood still running down the side of his leg. Misha takes a cautionary step back, though the dazed wolf doesn't appear to be outwardly hostile toward him. In fact, the two meet with each other's gazes for a moment, and Leo sobers slightly. What? He mumbles, bracing himself with a large arm against the wall. As Misha shifts his freeing efforts to me, Jenna nimbly steps around the broken glass and makes her way to Brian's fridge. She opens the she pulls open the door, tucking out various foodstuffs in plastic bags. Finally, she pulls out several bottles of water and hurries back over. Click. I gasp, holding my throat as I jerk my head forward. Big gulps of air enter my lungs with a refreshing sensation like anything I've ever felt. My whole body buzzes with a mixture of pain and relief. Jenna quickly hands me a bottle of water and I don't hesitate to start chugging it. Well, I try to and then I realize the cap is still on. After rectifying my error, I can see clearly the frazzled look in Jenna's eyes. Her usual cool demeanor, gone. And in its place, a deeply unsettled visage that now matches how I feel. She briefly looks off to her side, toward the broken window, then back to me. Chase, I... Misha takes two... Two of her water bottles, giving one to Leo and one to himself. That thing! Jenna nods. Yeah. Was that the thing you mentioned to me? On the hike? Her fur bristles, the fox finding the notion incredibly uncomfortable. I don't know what that was. It's something the authorities will investigate later, I suppose. So I wasn't fucking seeing shit. That really was some burnt motherfucker leaping out of that sick fuck's closet. Misha squeezes the bottle, splashing his face with the cold water. Must have been seven feet tall, at least. A burned man? Is that all he was? Just another victim of Brian's cruel torture, stashed away until now? Do you think he's still outside? M maybe Jenna responds in a hushed tone. I, I doubt Brian's in much of a threatening state, though. Yeah. 
They all seem to be fixated on the broken window, though none of us are jumping at the chance to investigate more closely. None of us except for Leo. I glance over and see the big wolf stumbling forward, arms outstretched. His movements are jittery, robotic, his maw hanging open slightly. His eyes still aren't fully open, yet he grasps the window still, the window still and peers out into the darkness. He stays there, motionless. Seconds pass at least. Seconds pass, at least ten, and finally he turns to face us. Never seen that before, Leo mumbles. You see anything? Yeah. Misha stares at him, bug-eyed. Well, what do you fucking see? Red. Misha sets his water bottle down, picking back up his knife and the contents of Brian's pockets. All right, fuck this. We're getting out of here. If that, that person we totally, we totally all just saw wanted to do a sin, it would have done so. I just want to get a car, get some distance from this place, call the cops on a payphone. He furrows his brow at something on the ground before picking it up and shoving it into his shorts. And spend the rest of the night cooped up in one of those 24-hour pancake houses where the wait staff is always around to watch you. Carl, gotta save him. Leo blurts us out like a spoken belch, his disoriented eyes seemingly swimming in their, pot in their sockets as he looks at no, no one in particular. The notion swells up a knot in my stomach. First fear, then guilt. Carl has been subjected to this for days. And maybe he knows more about the thing in the closet. That's a job for the police. She says this with an initial reassuring tone, though she falters for a moment. Though, those gunshots earlier. We should have heard the police sirens by now. I'm assuming the phone service and the internet is still down. So let's find a fucking car then. We drive to Peyton and ride out those murderer abiding fucks I call friends and never look back. Jenna sighs, closing her eyes for a moment, then nodding. Yeah. That's as sound of an idea as any. Let's go. I'm not seeing any car keys here. Pretty sure Duke has his ride. Gotta save Carl. Now. Leo interjects, and Jenna just looks at him, dumbfounded. Oh, go right ahead, Leo. She speaks up, gesturing to the floor, to the door flippantly. We'll be in Peyton. You go right ahead and tell us how that goes, hmm? Leo blinks slowly, before again slowly meandering to the door. Wait, what? I try to stop him, wincing at the pain in my leg. No, oh, Jesus. I managed to grab his shirt, and that staggers him enough to stop for a moment. I wasn't serious. Leo, please, come on. We'll stick together and get this taken care of. Carl. I can feel him pulling away, so I try to think of something to get him to stop. Leo, man, we need you. I need you. I squeeze his paw, briefly, just enough to show him I'm here as his eyes close once again. Like a lost child, he squeezes back. Physical contact feels nice, though after being stitched to him... I'm relieved that I'm really I'm relieved when he lets go. You two, uh, good to move? I take a tentative step, and Jenna takes me by the arm in case I fall. The pain is dizzying, and an overwhelming urge just to down a bottle of ibuprofen and crawl in a corner. But I definitely can still walk. I'll manage. Jenna smiles faintly at me. I'll help him. Leo, in all his stupid glory, said says nothing as he pulls open the front door and steps outside onto the dark. Misha steps up beside us. His skinny arms folded tightly over his chest. Okay, urgent care for him, and then the pancake house. Jesus. Man, what a fucked up situation. Hold up, I'm gonna eat some blueberries real quick. Mmm. Guys, blueberries are delicious. Oh my god, such a fucked up situation. Mmm. God, I wonder what that thing was. Well, Brian's clearly not much of a threat anymore, at least. I hope so. That thing seems to have severely injured him, at the very least. I can still feel the stitches in my leg, even though I pulled out the little bits of the line half hour ago. Despite living here a vast, a vast majority of my life, even I had trouble figuring out where the hell we were. As I walk, and the stinging throbs with every step, I close my eyes and realize how exhausted I really am. Running off extreme adrenaline for a day will take the wind out of you. So multiple blows to the head and torture, apparently. I keep imagining when I open my eyes, I'll be back in my I'll be back in my dorm. I'll sit up from the bed and Vincent will be tapping away at his laptop on the other side of the room. I tell him I had a fucked up dream and he'd tell me in that too cool for school tone, blog about it. The rhythmic tapping was at first really annoying, but now it's kinda like a white noise machine. It helps me sleep for some weird reason. Maybe because it makes me feel like I'm not so alone. Chase I inhale sharply, nearly tripping over a clump of weeds. Jenna places a precautionary arm out in front of me before easing back when she sees I've got my balance again. You still with us? She looks up at she looks me up and down. 
as if looking for signs that I'm turning into another Leo situation. Said Wolf is still with us, ambling along like he can't even feel that half his leg was stitched to mine less than an hour ago. He looked back to her, nodding. Yeah. Exhausted, but that's to be expected, I guess. Hmm. Ordinarily, I'd love to quiet walk with you at night, though considering the circumstances... She pauses, looking over her shoulder. Well, it could be worse. You had a guardian angel. She noticeably stiffens as I brings up the topic of what just happened. I'm trying not to think about it. None of us had gone around to check out where Brian was dragged. In fact, we made a beeline in the opposite direction. Ordinarily, the lights of the town would guide us where to go. But everything's dark. The moon our only real source of light. Alright, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Whew, man, what an episode. Man, what a harrowing fucking episode. God, I'm so glad Brian got... Hopefully, I, can throw, I hope Brian got torn to pieces. Little tiny pieces. I hope there's nothing left of him. Fucking evil motherfucker. But anyway, guys, this has been another episode of Echo. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!